Hey, this is Pastor Gary for another uh, Wednesday Word. Going to continue our devotional series on the characteristics of a committed Christian. Uh, before we do that, though, I'd like just to take a moment and just pray and, and lift up those uh, prayer requests that have been coming through our prayer line. Um, the Peacocks, the Rogers, and, and I'm sure I'm forgetting others. Those are the two that kept come to mind. Uh, but I just really would like for us to just as one, just lift up uh, all the prayer requests. And if you have one that, that you're, that's on your mind right now, go ahead and lift that up as well. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you right now, Father. Father, we pray for, pray for those families that are going through uh, different situations right now, Father. We'd be lost of loved ones, Father. Father, just the news of, of medical, you know, just finding out somebody has cancer or recovering from surgery like Philip Dutton, Father, Father, I just, Father, lift them all up to you, Father, the Peacocks, the Rogers, the Duttons, Father, Father, just uh, pray for the the family of the young lady that was found, Father, Father, just lift them all up to you, Father, Father, those that we know and those that we don't know, Father, Father, uh, we know that we can come to you, Father, because you're, you know, we just want to lift them and, and, and leave, leave them at your feet, Father. Father, we pray your will be done in each of these prayer requests, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Um, so, just like I said, we're going to continue uh, the devotional series on, on the characteristic of a, characteristics of a committed Christian. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do, uh, and, and I guess it, it just, just I, something that I've just always enjoyed doing is, is reading uh, different types of books, reading leadership style books. When when I was in education and, and now uh, in the pastoral role, it's, you know, always like to keep up to date and, and where trends are, or, you know, looking at data with regards to education and, and looking at, you know, how to reach people and, and how to lead people. And so leadership books have always been an interest to me. And so uh, it's something that I enjoy doing is gleaning information like that. Uh, but there's always two types of questions. There's always two questions that I ask myself about books that I might look at that I'm looking to purchase or, or download or something like that is first, is it reliable? Uh, second is, is it useful to me? Uh, you know, all these books are focused on very different variables. And, and, you know, the author is in a different place or has different research or different data. And so they're writing this, this, this book or, uh, based on data that they've collected or, or research that they've seen. And, and so, you know, I got to know that I got to see if this book is proven to be reliable and useful to me. And if it is, I buy it and I read it. You know, it, it's kind of like going to the bookstore and seeing books, uh, to tell you how to invest your money. You know, you could, if you think about it, when you buy a book on from somebody on, and they're telling you how to invest your money and you invest your money buying this book, really the only one that's making money is the author. Uh, and, and so is it useful to you? Is it reliable to you? And those are the things you got to ask yourself. So, you know, the, the fact is that most of us already own a book that has proven to be totally reliable. And it's useful for to every person, wherever you are in your walk, wherever you are in your life. But yet it often sits neglected. I'm talking about the Bible. You know, it, it's a book that is totally reliable and useful to every person. Second Timothy uh, 3, 16 through 17 says that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Most of us own several copies of the Bible in different translations, NSAB, The Message, King James, New King James, you know, but having a copy in a prominent place in your house will not rub off on your family. You cannot learn by osmosis. Like any book, the Bible will only profit you if you read it, study it, and apply it to your life. See, the committed Christian recognizes the value of the Bible. As a result, we give our allegiance to God's word. That word allegiance is an important word. It means to give devotion or loyalty to something or someone. We are giving our loyalty to God's word. We are saying that we are faithful to God's word. God's word always has the final say in our lives. The committed Christian is unapologetic about sharing God's word with others because it is the inspired word of God. The committed Christian is convinced of what Paul writes is, is that it, the Bible is inspired by God, that all scripture is God breathed. 
The committed Christian understands that if the scriptures are God-breathed, that they are as, as reliable as God is. And we, sh and we are unapologetic about sharing God's word be with others because of its power for, of transfer transformation. In Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, it says that the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it is always, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it, will, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Let me repeat those last two sentences. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it is, and it always produces fruit. Amen. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful promise of what God's word does in our lives. The committed Christian understands that if the scriptures are God breathed, then the power of God resides within us. Therefore, we share God's word with confidence. A committed Christian studies God, God's word diligently. We are told that all scripture is useful for four things. Teaching, that means it reveals what path we are to walk on. For rebuking, that means that, it, that God's word reveals when we have gotten off the right path. For correction. That means that God's word reveals how to get back on the right path. And then for instruction in righteousness. That means the Bible reveals how to stay on the right track and how to not repeat our mistakes. At different times in our lives, we are always in need of one of those four things. Whether it is truth to discover, a sin to confess, a correction to make, a lesson to learn, we find it in the pages of the Bible. The Bible has been described as an armory of heavenly weapons, a laboratory of infallible medicines, a mine of exhaustless wealth. It is the guidebook for every road, a chart for every sea, a medicine for every malady, and a balm for every wound. You see, a committed Christian submits to God's word completely. D.L. Moody once said that the scriptures were not given to increase our knowledge, but to change our lives. Because, the, because we as committed, as committed Christians truly believe that all scripture is God breathed and is useful, we are, we faithfully apply all of its truth in our, to our lives. So that we might become everything God has in mind for us. So that we will be able to perform everything God has in mind for us to do. A.W. Tozer uh, said that we must not select a few favorite passages to the exclusion of others. Nothing less than a whole Bible can make a whole Christian. To take and parse the Bible out, to only share half the gospel is to tell a whole lie. We've got to tell everyone about God's word, the good, the bad, and, and, and in between, because it's infallible, it's true, it's inerrant. And this is exactly what Paul wrote in, in 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The idea here is that true fulfillment in life is found in seeing God's purpose and God's purposes for my life fulfilled. Submitting to the truth found in God's word is the key to being equipped to live the life of fulfillment that God has saved you to live. A Bible that's fallen apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Because they daily dedicate time to get and dig into God's word. There's, it's tear stained. It's highlighted. The pages are, are, are written on of praises, of prayers, of, of where to find God, the answer that God has given us. The committed Christian recognizes that this, that so that he gives his allegiance to the word of God. See, the committed Christian knows that our life, this is, this is the foundation to our Christian walk, is, the, is God's word. Usually we think of ways of taking in God's word, right? Uh, Jeremiah 3.15, uh, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. That, that, you know, that's when uh, that Sunday sermon when, or, or, or Wednesday sermon when, when hearing the word taught by our pastors and teachers. 
You know, reading the Bible ourselves, you know, Deuteronomy 17, 19 speaks to that when it says, it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by carefully observing all the words of this law and these statutes. You know, it's studying the scriptures intently. As we read in Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, my son, if you will receive my words and my treasure commandments within you, and treasure my commandments within you. Make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your hearts to understand, to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. And we also memorize key passages. You know, it's not exempting others, but storing up passages in our heart. Like the psalmist wrote in Psalms 119.11, Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. All of these methods are needed for a balanced intake of the word of God. I leave you with this question. How might you need to grow in your allegiance to God's word in the days to come? Amen. And it's not by just having it on your your desk or your coffee table or on your bedside. Uh, it, it's about digging into it. It's about being in it. It's about opening up and opening your heart to hear God's word and being patient enough to hear from him. Amen. Well, amen. And so I uh, thank you for taking the time to, to watch this. As we continue uh, this sermon series and Pastor Tim's sermon series, you know, I've been blessed so much by what Pastor Tim has been teaching. And so uh, Wednesday Word has definitely been a blessing to me as well. Uh, I pray for you uh, and, and I pray that you have a great rest of the week. Don't forget that this Saturday at the Magnolia campus, uh, they're having their um, uh, clothing distribution day. It's the first one. Go out there and support them. Uh, you know, share Share that with others in your community and in your neighborhood. It's definitely been a blessing at the Spring Campus. And so we're praying for you out there. Um, it, and, and as a member, uh, it's just, it's always good to go out and support the ministries that are going on uh, within our church and, and that outreach. Uh, you will definitely be blessed if you go by and support them. Amen. Amen. Well, don't forget to be in church on Sunday. Pastor Joe is doing, has his at the end of time sermon series. And it's, it, that's been very insightful. And I tell you what, it's a call. Uh, it's a call to action for all of us. Amen. Amen. Well, with that being said, let me, let me close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for this time that you've given us to, to dive deep into your word, Father, and learn from you, Father. Father, and what you've written down, Father, we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless.